It's December and it's dark. We're in Edinburgh, Scotland's capital city. As the northernmost Sunday Assembly, we know more than most about winter, the short days, the sun low in the sky when it's visible at all, the long nights and the lure of a good fire, a wee dram and the company of others. And always the year slowly but firmly turns. On the winter solstice, the shortest day and the longest night, the earth holds her breath and then begins another long inhalation as a new cycle begins. In that moment, the pause between out and in, darkness and light, old and new, comes a stillness. This is the time brought to mind in Liz Lockhart's poem In the Mid-Midwinter. Lochhead, a former Scots macker, the Scots national poet, quotes from the traditional ballad Sir Patrick Spens, where the arrival of a new moon is a bad omen before grasping the situation with a gallus, cheeky optimism. In the mid midwinter, at midday on the year's midnight, into my mind came. I saw the new moon late yestreen with the old moon in her arms. Though no, there is no moon, of course. There's nothing very much of anything to speak of in the sky except a gay dreek greyness, rain-laden over Glasgow, and today there is the very least of even this for us to get. But the light comes back, the light always comes back, and this begins tomorrow with however many minutes of sun and serotonin. Meanwhile, there will be the winter moon for us to love the longest, fat in the frosty sky among the sharpest stars, and lines of old songs we can't remember why we know, or when we first heard them, will I come back, once in a blue moon to us unbidden, and bless us with their long-travelled light. Hi, my name's Marie, and I'm from Sunday Assembly Edinburgh, and I'm going to tell you a bit more about our traditions in Scotland around the new year. Hug my knee and first footing. I'm all dressed up and ready to go. I'm waiting for the New Year bells to ring on Hugmany evening. Hugmany is New Year's Eve in Scotland and it's a bigger, better celebration than any other festive day in the calendar for us. It stems from the tradition of winter solstice and the Vikings and all the wild parties that they used to have. So we wait with our families at home on Hogmanay evening, waiting for the bells to ring. Once they've rang out, you're free to go first footing your friends and your neighbours. A first footer is the first person across the threshold in the new year. It's traditional for them to bring a dram, preferably whiskey, some fruit loaf, or as we call it, black bun, and some coal. So that's something to drink, something to eat and something to warm the hearf and bring a flame of warmth into your home. It's traditional that if you do get a first footer that's tall, dark and handsome, then you're going to have good luck the rest of the year. So I'll be off and I'll leave you with a poem by Benjamin Zephaniah. People need people. Enjoy whatever kind of first footing you can do this Hogmanay, whether it's face-to-face, -face, virtual or socially distanced. People need people to walk to, to talk to, to cry and rely on. People will always need people to love and to miss, to hug and to kiss. It's useful to have other people. To whom to moan if you're all alone? It's so hard to share when no one is there. There's not much to do when there's no one but you. People will always need people. To please, to tease, to put you at ease. People will always need people. To make life appealing and give life some meaning. It's useful to have other people. If you need a change, to whom will you turn? If you need a lesson... From whom will you learn? If you need to play, who will I say? People will always need people. As girlfriends, as boyfriends from Bombay to Ostend, 
People will always need people to have friendly fights with and tasty bites with. It's useful to have other people. People live in families, gangs, posses and packs. It seems we need company before we relax to stop making enemies. And let's face the facts. People will always need people. Yeah. People will always need people. And as we gather here in one place, joining from many places across the world, me at my kitchen table, not far from Edinburgh's seaside, Portobello, closer to the figgy barn that runs through our park down to the sea, and close as well to Arthur's Seat, one of the seven hills that ring round our city and hold place in the middle of it too. I think about the way that we're places in light and in dark. We're in places in day and in night, in winter and in summer. I invite you to pause and recognise how nature can hold all of this and hold all of us. Nature holds contradictions, complexities and possibilities beyond what we can know. This knowledge that nature is wise and wonderful, sustaining and soothing, is a knowledge that many in our Sunday Assembly community have really leaned into this year. Moments when we've shared these experiences have been moments of joy. It's a joy that's celebrated in countless times and places, not least in the not quite so well-known verses of Auld Lang Syne. In these verses, Rabbi Barnes rejoices in the days he spent running in the hills, picking flowers and paddling in streams, while also recognising the way that the events of life, the roads we walk and the seas we sail, can distance us from each other. He writes, We twa he ran about the breeze and pulled in gowans fine, but we've wondered mony a weary fit as an old lang syne. For old lang syne, my joe, for Auld Lang Syne. We'll tack a cup of kindness yet for Auld Lang Syne. We try her paddled in the barn from morning sun till dine, but seas between us broad her roared. It's an Auld Lang Syne. And just as our gathering here today affirms that seas, and indeed oceans, aren't enough to stop us coming together in celebration, remembrance and friendship, Barnes ends his poem rejoicing that we'll always have ways to come back into connection with each other, toasting goodwill and good times with good people, however long ago they may feel. And here's a hand, my trusty fear, and gee's a hand o' thine, will tack a right good willy wot for auld lang syne. And we invite you now to join Debbie from our Sunday Assembly community and raise your cup in kindness and sing for auld Lang sign.